Good morning, 2 Corinthians day 3, chapters 8 to 10. And uh, we have no choice this morning about what we are going to talk about. It is generosity. Uh, it is one of the great sections of the New Testament which addresses this matter of financially supporting other believers. The Bible exalts giving to other Christians above giving to people who are not believers. God wants the church in particular to look after its own members. And um, he actually, he quotes an Old Testament verse about the manna in the wilderness. That when the manna fell, they were told, collect only enough for tomorrow. And some of them went out and collected more than, than they should have. And the, the bit, then they ate what they needed and they kept some over for the following day. And the next morning it had bread worms. And then there's this verse that says those who gathered much did not have a surplus because it, it had worms. But those who gathered little had no luck. Everyone got the same at the end of the day. You got enough for what you needed for the day. And Paul uses that as a principle and he says, there should be an equality in the body of Christ. That if one part of the body is suffering lack, that part of the body which abounds should meet the need of the part of the body that is suffering lack. Okay, now if you live in a nation like mine or you have a, a work situation like mine or you are anything like me. You are one of the wealthy of this world and one of the wealthy of the church. You know, if you've got a house that you live in and two cars in the garage, you are way above the average Christian in the world. And so we are almost like the Corinthians. You know, Paul says you abound in everything. And Corinth was a very wealthy city. This was a church full of wealth. And he doesn't try to make them feel guilty for being wealthy. He, he doesn't say, well, you know, wealth, your wealth is corrupting you. What he does say, however, is God has blessed you with a certain position in life. And there is a responsibility that you carry because of the, the, the abundance that you enjoy. One of the responsibilities that God lays on you, Corinthians, and you, my friend, if you're watching this video, more than likely you fall into this category. God has placed a responsibility on you to meet the needs of poor Christians. Now, this is one of the reasons why you need to be a member of a local church. Because it is within a local church that you get to meet other Christians. You get to form relationships. You get to have an insight into what people are going through, what their life circumstances are. You, you hear when someone has a need. So my challenge to you this morning is who? Just let your mind wander a little bit. What Christian brother or sister do you know that is struggling financially right now? And what can you give them today? When I was reading this, I sent a, a voice note to one of the pastors of my church. And there was a guy that I met on Sunday morning who has a beautiful spirit. He's just been baptized. And in his water baptism, he got freed from um, alcohol or certainly since the baptism, which is about three weeks ago. He's not touched alcohol and he was an alcoholic. And he was so beautifully presented on, on Sunday morning, clean shaven, such a beautiful, humble spirit. And yet he's, he's living in, in the night shelter. I only found that out afterwards and it broke my heart. Like this guy, he's doing everything he can to live in the dignity that he feels Christ has given him now that he's saved. And yet struggling. So I sent a message to the pastor and I said to him, I've got a sum of money I'd like to give him. And you can guide me as to how we best do that, what the needs are. So who can you support today? Okay, let me then finish with the thought from Scripture that I want to share with you. And that is what generosity within the body of Christ does. Because it does more than you think it does. This harkens back to one of my recent devotions where I talked about prayer. When we pray for one another, it does something to the body itself. Where we, we, we all glorify God together for the answer to prayers. It brings a community together in love. 
So does generosity. Listen to Paul's words. This is from verse 12 of chapter 9. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints. So, so it, it not only is going to supply the need of this, this chap. It's going to do something else. Well, what is that? But also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God. While through the proof of this ministry, they, the recipients, glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Generosity within the body of Christ causes thanksgiving to God. It causes Christians to be bound together in love. And it causes the recipients to, to be so grateful to those who have supported them that they pray for them. God, I thank you for this person who shared with me what they had and they didn't have to. I'm a lowly, humble person. I've got no power. There's nothing I can offer them. And they've supported me. God, I pray you bless them. Bless them even more. It, it, it stimulates love and prayer and thanksgiving and the binding of the body together. So who can you support today? Well, God bless you as you do. And I will see you tomorrow. And remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. That was also in today's reading. What a promise. Okay, see you tomorrow.